All right. So EXP Realty just passed 20,000 agents. And it isn't just that they're growing, they're attracting some of the top teams and agents in the world. In fact, you may not know this, last year, they were already ranked fourth for the volume and number of sides in the country, fourth and fifth, respectively. So they're growing their agent count. They're attracting agents that are selling a lot of homes. And today I am going to be interviewing the man that I think is single-handedly the most responsible for their growth. His name is Jay Kinder. I'm going to bring him on in a second. In fact, this is the man that Gary Keller and Brad Enman were fighting about on the main stage without mentioning him by name which I think even says more about what he brings to the table. Now, the beauty of what Jay is doing is that he is using tactics and techniques that are repeatable no matter what your goals are. So as an example, if you want to sell more homes, the techniques and tactics that he's using can be applied. Clearly, if your goal is to recruit somebody to your team or to your company, then today's show is for you. But what Jay's really great at is making money. Let's be honest. He is good at making money, which is what everybody watching wants to make more of. Now, The Water Cooler is a show about marketing and technology. We also cover sales. Our goal is to bring you advice that works. My name's Chris Smith. I'm the best-selling author of The Conversion Code. I'm the co-founder at Curator. And the reality, Jay, to be massively successful, right? Your, your conference is the Exponential Growth Summit, right? You, you, right. To, to be massively successful in this industry, you have to grow. You either have to grow your team, you have to grow your brokerage, and the reality is you know how to grow, you know how to scale. You scaled your team, right? you scaled your coaching, right? and now you're scaling EXP. Right. So today I just wanna to learn how you did it and how we can do the same if we're, if we're in the audience. Now, I'm gonna start with a tough question, Jay. Yeah, I figured that. <laughs> when you're in sales, me and Jimmy came up with that. We, we call this the jolt. <laughs> we're gonna start you with a jolt. Right. Like, when you're in sales, whether you're an agent, whether you're a curator, whether you're a coach, whatever it may be, is you want everyone to buy your stuff. But the reality is that everybody doesn't buy your stuff. Yep. So we're going to talk a little bit today about who EXP is right for. Who mm -hmm. is EXP not right for? Yeah. So um, I, I would say that the, the person that it's not right for is an agent that's doing um, five to seven transactions and has no goals for trying to do better. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, because and the reason I say that is because like I, I genuinely believe and know that if you want to grow your business, I can help you. And and, and EXP is a platform that allows that to happen without you paying me. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I believe if you're hungry um, and you want to do more, you want more um, for your life, then um, then this is an opportunity you should really um, look closely at. And and honestly, I feel like it's financially irresponsible for you not to look closely at it. And understand it better and I think a lot of people just don't understand the model but but I think that the, if I was gonna say there was mm -hmm. that it's not right for someone it's that agent that's only piddling around doing five to seven ten deals a year and they mm -hmm. have no uh, no interest in doing more than that or they're saying they want more but they, right. their actions and their ambitions are not as big as their mouth right so right, right. It's, it's so true we talked to thousands of people at curator and they're at that level they've got 300 past clients you know, they're getting most of their business from there. And it's like, yeah. do you really want to do the internet? This is different, right? right? So yeah. everybody says they want to do the internet, but I bet you could even think back to the first hundred internet leads you got. You're probably like, screw this. Right. This is, I'd, this I'd rather is go back to talking to the lady that knows me and likes me. Exactly. Right. So I and, get it. So if you're complacent, if you're full, don't right. join. If you're not hungry. So right. if you're, you know, helping a couple relatives a year and you're kind of part time in it. Maybe you still work down at Home Depot or something on the side. This is the EXP is not for you. But if you want to grow, would you say just to follow that up? If I'm at five or six deals, but I'm hungry, yeah. is EXP right for me? Yeah, I think so. I, I, I believe that it's the right platform for the agent that wants to grow. I believe that um, you know, and, and we can, I'm sure we'll get into this the, mm -hmm. the business model and why it is so disruptive. Mm -hmm. but like, there's just more training you can get in a cloud environment than you can get in a physical environment. And yeah. Well, that leads me right into my next question All because right. you hear a lot about the cloud and you hear a lot about EXP. And I'll, I'll be honest, Jay, back in 2010, I went on the road with Glenn Sanford. Okay. And Glenn was actually part of the agent reboot tour. He was a sponsor and right. we went to 24 cities together. 
and I saw him get on stage and I saw him talk about the cloud. You guys have some magical island <laughs> where all of your little bit emojis hang out. And I'm not going to lie, Jay, it went over people's heads. Oh, yeah. It came across as almost cheesy and irrelevant. So talk to me about yeah. that virtual environment, because while it sounds great, when right. I saw people see it, it did this. Right. And, and, and to be honest with you, it, it probably still for a lot of people, they just don't see the see why it's so disruptive. Mm -hmm. But think back. I mean, you're talking 2010, you know, nine is when I think, um, you know, you know, he actually created XP. But um, this was like two, three years after the iPhone came out. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. we're talking that's way back. Right. Like no one was using their phone for for anything at that point. I mean, Facebook was only four or five years old. Right. I mean, not mm -hmm. Facebook, but uh, uh, YouTube. So like, you know, that's a, that was a pretty, really crazy uh, forward thinking idea. This was before we were getting, you know, three or five boxes from Amazon on our porch every day. This was before mm -hmm. we were streaming on Netflix. So, you know, so what's so disruptive about the cloud is, and when you think about, at least when I think about it, um, what is, you know, what is it that your brokerage actually provides? And, and for us, we coached a lot of, uh, a lot of agents up to a point where, they were paying so much to the brokerage and, and these franchise fees and whatever, maybe little split they still had um, that it just didn't make sense to give them 50,000, a hundred thousand. I call these back here, my hundred thousand dollar awards from Coal banker because I paid about a hundred grand for each of them mm -hmm. uh, when I was a Coal banker and, and a great company, but it just doesn't make financial sense mm -hmm. for you to pay the, pay these royalties. Uh, once you become super successful with your business, it, it mm -hmm. starts to add up. And so, um, you know, when you take away the region, um, the, the need for a region to mm -hmm. go out and, and build um, a franchisees and, and then ultimately hire recruiters or a team leader or whatever, and then you've got agents at the bottom of the model, um, and, you, and you get rid of that, there's hundreds of millions of dollars in the model there. And really what happens is those royalties go back up to the top, as you know, and get paid and get paid out to these regional opportunities, these people that buy these regional opportunities. Sure. Um, and so what, what, what the cloud does this disruptive is number one, there's, um, there's, can you do, I would say this, and I would ask you if you, if you feel the same, mm -hmm. what is it that an agent's looking for in a brokerage is mm -hmm. training, support, technology. Um, I think that's really probably the top three. Um, if you were to ask agents, at sure. least that, those are three common ones we get all the time. And can you, can you deliver more training in a cloud office versus mm -hmm. in a physical environment? And the answer would be yes. And can you deliver more support mm -hmm. um, in a cloud office? And the answer would be yes again. And so it is disruptive in that way that you can actually provide more value in a cloud office mm -hmm. as opposed to- um, as yeah, opposed And to I think, I th Jay, I think that's what happened is people missed the big change in the world because of the goofiness of the Sim right. City Island. Right. And what, right. what Glenn was trying to say, what, what clearly has caught on now, is what I just heard is you don't need brick and mortar to be successful. As you know, what's always so funny, you and I will pack a suitcase, travel halfway across the country, go do a speech for 119 people. Yeah. Meanwhile, we could crank up a Facebook Live and this interview will have 2,000 views by the end of the day. Right. So the, 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 the way that I've explained technology is it spotlights and it accelerates greatness. Right. What you're saying is it does that for training. It does that for coaching. It does that for if you need help. And as you explain it, you know, I'm sure a lot of people watching are using Slack or right. they're using something like Facebook Workplace, right? I know, that's, uh, I know Compass uses that. We use Slack. We use it. Yeah. So yeah. if you think about you know, the virtual world that EXP built, it really is just like a more visual version of a Slack. There's rooms, right. there's channels, there's DMs, there's right. search to find documents you need. So I, I, I just always thought that was interesting to see how far EXP has come because the reality is this, Jay, Sherry Chris was on that tour too. Yep. He was the CEO of Better Homes and Gardens. She still is. Yep. And they were, they were the two people talking about the, cool new brokerage and her message of lifestyle branding consumers knowing who the brand is i think it worked better at that time than glenn's right now that we look a decade later i think exp has a little bit more buzz and hype and growth than bh and g the point would be both messages resonated but you're right one of the downsides everyone talks about the upside of early adoption oh the yeah downside is that you're too early yeah, and that that these big smart ideas you have, people can't even appreciate them yet because the world hasn't caught up 
to right. your forward thinkingness, which is, right. I think, what a lot of people would say about Glenn. Now, 100%. there's a lot of talented people joining EXP, and I'm sure you've got a great pitch. I'm sure that you pitch several reasons. But if you had to dumb it all the way down to one word, what is the one word that you think of when I say, why are so many people joining? Mm, that's, that's, a, that's a tough one. Um, opportunity. Opportunity? Yep. Opportunity. So um, it's not I, math? It's not it. math? Well, well let me it. ask you, is it math? Because from, from what I see, and you know, we have some clients that have joined recently. We have clients that have joined a while back. We have clients trying to get our other clients to join. I get it. Right. But is the word math? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you do the math, um, which we, I had a mentor one time that uh, he started every conversation with, let's do the math. Let's do the math. Right. Um, uh, and in every situation, you, you, you come uh, real clear with where, where you need to be. I think there's some ancillary things that are, um, I almost said alignment. And um, mm -hmm. that, that's, it's a magical thing when, when compensation gets uh, in alignment and you've got a lot of really powerful people that are, are now not just, you know, you're not, they're not, you're not, they're not just my opportunity. They're my responsibility. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a big deal. And, um, that's a, that's, that's the, that's the special intangible that this model created. Mm -hmm. It's not just that there's opportunity. I think that's what's attracting the big whales that are coming on board. Sure. Um, they're, so the whales are in it more for the math. Yeah. I the would newer say our um, agents are in it for the growth and then yeah. what the math looks like as they grow. Right. And, um, you know, you know, there's not been a single mega team that I've brought over that, that didn't um, think about what well, is this better for my agents, mm -hmm. right? Like that, that's a, you know, a common thread amongst the most successful people we know in any business is that they are great leaders and great mm -hmm. leaders care about their people. Mm -hmm. And so um, it has to be better for the agent or it's not a better decision to make the move. And so that, that at every stage um, is, is in the, in the conversation with independents, teams, um, you know, old franchise owners and things of that nature, um, big and small. I think that it has to answer the question for, is it better for the agent and, 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 um, uh, the ones that join see the value. So you've, you've talked about technology a little bit. And when, when we talk about math, what was the first thing you said? I paid a hundred thousand dollars for those awards. So math right. is a part of it. For and sure it is. It yeah. leads me to my next question, which is, you know, I was with Inman. We did all these studies and technology mattered, culture mattered. Coaching mattered, splits mattered, all that stuff mattered. Right. But when I look at the landscape right now, Keller Williams is building, you know, Kel and the Keller Cloud, and Keller Williams and Gary are talking nonstop, and Edmonds covering it nonstop about how they're a technology company. Okay. Then you just explained to me how EXP is the cloud, and the cloud is what matters, and the cloud is what creates the opportunities for growth. Not to mention Compass just bought Contactually. Compass is calling themselves a technology company. At this point, Jay, is technology even a differentiator? Mm. Yeah, that's a great qu question. I, I mean, I, I always ask the question, you know, is this, you know, is this new kill and or this new technology going to help you do more transactions? And if so, how? Um, you know, is it going to help you maybe operationally manage things a little bit better here or there? Yeah, it can, there's, there's some slight improvements I think technology can, can do for your business. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think the business model is, is the big differentiator today. Um, I think the business model is what matters most and, and, you know, Compass is doing some interesting things. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, you know, I hope Keller Williams, you know, delivers on some sick technology for their agents. I think that yeah. it's just because I'm watching what you're doing and I'm seeing who's attracted to what you're doing. And I haven't seen any of them join and say their tech was better. So I joined. No. And but, I think but meanwhile, all I hear from Keller Williams is our tech is better. So don't leave. But it doesn't even exist. So that, I mean, it's kind of a, um, un, I mean, you know, not to poke, poke fun. Technology is a hard game. <laughs> I mean, you've mastered it. I think you've built it. We haven't mastered it. We have not mastered it. I wish we could, but it's, exp well, this is the point. It's expensive. Yep. It takes a lot of trial and error. And oh, by the way, the more people you have using it, the dumber it has to be. Right. That's right. Because, and then the more people using it, the more it breaks. Let's add that to it as well. Sure. So I just think it's fascinating because, listen, you, you, correct me if I'm wrong, you've used Commission Zinc. For sure. You've used Boomtown. For sure. W wouldn't you say that quite literally both of those are better than any technology any brokerage has built so far? 
Um, yes, I would say that that's, that's a fair statement. Um, the, the, uh, and, and even the ones that are conversion, whatever it may be. Yeah. And I haven't used any, you know, so i never joined a brokerage and used their technology, but I've not seen anything that, that just knocked my socks off as far as, you know, sure. what you can go out and purchase yourself. And I think there's two, you know, you, you, you said this and this is what, you know, as a brokerage, I think it's a challenge that everybody deals with. I think one of the biggest differentiators for EXP right now is that, you know, it, they do provide a technology you would have to go out and pay, you know, 700 bucks a month for mm -hmm. um, that's included. Um, that's a big deal for the agents that are doing less than 30 deals that couldn't sure. afford to go, go buy that. That's a huge deal because now they have a, a full CRM follow up system. They can go lead generate and they don't have that, that, you know, that problem of what should I buy? I don't know what I can afford the ups and downs, you know, in, in your earlier, you know, when you're doing that many deals, trying to figure out marketing and how to acquire a customer through marketing. Um, that's a, that's a really big thing for that agent to be able to have. And so agents at that level typically join, and that's one of the main things that they like in the, you know, the training and, and some of the alignment with some of uh, the things that we can provide them as well. Um, but then as you, you know, the, the bigger mega, mega agent teams, they're not even using KB core. Why? Sure. Because they, they built their own solutions or they found their own solution. And it, it's more disruptive to try to change the technology and all of your agents and all of that, you know what I'm saying? It's just not usually worth it. You would you would keep doing what's working. And if you're going to add a technology, you might add a technology, but um, you wouldn't want to disrupt things. So it, it's not much of a differentiator for the, you know, the mega agents and, the, and all the big teams that are moving over. And I think that this is, you know, um, you know, why we're growing as fast as we are is because we're getting the the biggest names in every city and um, and they're all coming to EXP. Yeah. And that's a, well, I think you asked the right question. How is X going to help me increase my sales, make right. more money, not look good on stage, not impress in a demo? You know, you see everybody, right. oh, give me your zip code and I'll get you a report from my virtual assistant robotic AI machine learning app. And it's like, okay, cool. Did they list with you? Right. <laughs> like, because that's ultimately the scoreboard yes, is really is. what matters. And so when I see people that score a lot of points joining EXP, I'm intrigued to know why. So let me give you a little bit of a challenge here, Jay. All right. You're clearly a great sales guy. And I, what I think a lot of people don't realize is even when you get to your level or my level or whatever kind of success we've had, you still deal with very difficult objections all the time. I'm sure that, you know, yeah, you're introducing the team that joined, but you probably had to overcome some really difficult objections to get them to do so. So I'm going to give you a couple scenarios. Right. And I want you to try to overcome these objections. And I'm okay, guessing- yeah, but before, we, before we do this, yeah. I'm going to tell you, I, my presentation tries to cover all the objections up front so we don't have to deal with objections. Sure. Just so you know. But-, uh, but, but, I'm getting, I, but Well, I would guess you cover these because- whether you proactively uncover the objections, which is what right. you do, which is what I teach, right. or they kind of save them till the very end. Right. I'm, I'm sure they matter. So here, here will be my first one. Like, Jay, you know, I love what you guys are doing at EXP, but Gary Keller has helped me so much in my career. Mm. He's the reason I'm successful, and I feel too much loyalty to him and Keller Williams because of that to leave. Right. So, um, yeah, I can appreciate, um, I can appreciate that. I have a lot of respect for Gary and I think that that's honorable that you would consider your own well-being, um, and would consider Gary and your loyalty to him before your own well-being. But my question to you would be is what is your plan for the next 10 years? And, and is the current plan that you're on going to get you to your goals? And, um, that would be my first question. Okay. So you would make it less about Gary and more about me. Right. You would because possibly, reality, yeah, because because I, I see this whether it's even Dave Leninger, you know, or right. even some of the executives at Realogy, you know, people are loyal to their leader. Like right. when we did Pitch Fest Brokerage Edition at our conference, which people can find on our YouTube channel, I think you know Compass mentioned Robert. And they mentioned Gary and they mentioned Dave and they mentioned like the leadership always comes up. So I just curious how you would handle like, yeah. Hey, Gary Keller's a billionaire and Glenn's not yet. And Gary Keller got me to where I'm at. So that makes me feel comfortable that he can get me to where I want to go. You're saying you would then make it more about the next 10 years and, yeah. and is your career path on path? Cause if the answer is no to that, how much is Gary really helping? Right, and then, yeah, then the then then we we uncover the plan to help him get there. Right, like sure. that's 
you know that and I, I just believe that this me- this this model has a mechanism to get you to financial freedom that yeah um, you know what you should say jay you should say don't worry you can still read his books we won't tell right. <laughs> yeah that, that works too <laughs> all right. Let me give all you books. There's nothing wrong with that at no, all. That's my point. Like we, right. we kind of live in a world now where even if you leave, like b- believe it or not, some people quit curator, but they keep watching the show. They're going to buy my next book. They're listening right. to the podcast on the weekend. So, you know, people are going to come in and out of your life and the way that you do or don't burn those bridges really right. matters, right. frankly. Right. But let me give you another one. All right. You know, Jay, I love what you guys are doing at EXP, but I sell luxury listings. And Compass feels like a much better fit for that. Sure. I can appreciate that. So tell me more about about your brand. My brand is about luxury and class and consumer first marketing. Okay. And and how are you delivering um, um, superior value to your luxury and high-end clients? Through, Through service and marketing. Okay. And would you continue to do those things if you were at EXP? Of course. Okay. So then in, in reality, you are the brand. That's a good point. Right. Uh, you know, Compass is a newer brand. Right. So yeah. So that, you know, uh, of all the but things. But I could, but I could, let me pivot into Sotheby's then. Okay. Christie's, Sotheby's, right? Like I know that a lot of the objections our clients face when they're trying to get a million dollar listing is, hey, I think your plan's great but you don't do a lot of luxury. So right. if, if I'm that top agent, my average price point's 1.2. Right. And the EXP average price point is 400K. Right. Talk me into joining. Right. So yeah, um, I think, uh, you know, the goal would be for you to be the brand, not the brokerage. Mm-hmm. And so, um, and where I, I do think there's some, there, there's some validity in the concern of some of these, um, uh, some of these larger brands that are, are focused in, uh, in luxury. And, mm-hmm. And certainly, I think EXP is is stepping up in that direction. Um, I would say, you know, uh, you know, I never did luxury. I'm from Lawton, Oklahoma, so this is, a, you know, this isn't something I had to really had to ever had a challenge with. Um, but I think um, what I do know is I know branding, and I know that if when you become the go to person in a marketplace, you could be you could have balloons on your sign, you could have whatever you want on your sign, and it doesn't matter mm-hmm. um, because you're the brand. And so, you know, the at the end of the day, you know, you have to build a brand that attracts business to you. And, uh, and, and if you do that correctly, then, then they're never going to cho- you know, use the company to validate uh, why they're choosing to go with you. They're going to choose you because you're the person that has the marketing plan to get their home sold for the most amount of money. And you were able to demonstrate that to them. Uh, mm-hmm. And that's what we teach people how to do. So if that's a, something that you, they need, that you need help with, I certainly can help you with that. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's, that, would be, um, that would be my answer to that. I, don't well, think I think, it's, I think it's, the, the, it's well said because the ulti- you, you can only do one of two things. You can go promote you or your company. Which one right. do you think you should spend your time promoting? Right. <laughs> you. Yeah, Probably right? you. If you're using yeah. it, the company, it's a crutch. Um, yeah. To me, the company can be a nice to have. It's awesome right. that Compass does consumer marketing. It's awesome that Sotheby's has mind share with wealthy folks. Right. But at the end of the day, you know, right. it's really more about most agents don't even spend enough time on marketing in general. Right. So it's not hard to believe they don't want to go fly the KW and Compass flag when they have a few minutes. They want to fly their fucking face. Right. Dan, <laughs> so it. Let me give you one more objection. This is fun. Thanks for bearing with me. Huh. This is one, uh, we won't name any names, but I'm sure as you've gone and recruited some of these really good brokerages and agents and teams, uh, you, you, just gave me the, you gave me the two best, the, those are the two biggest, um, toughest objections that I've gotten for sure. So you're on point. I'll okay. Give you- it's just kind of what I would ask. You know what I mean? If I, if I were interviewing you and I was right. in your boat, those would be the things that mattered to me. Here's one more. This is a tough one. I'm not going to lie. All right. Jay. I really want to join. I'm sold, but I'm in an agreement with Remax or Century 21 that I can't get out of. <laughs> legally, I can't. I can't advise you on. <laughs> okay. I have to go there legally. I, I'm not allowed to. That would be torturous uh, interference uh, with with a. So, uh, so if somebody is a broker and they've got a contract with a company, yeah. uh, it, it's sort of like going after a listing if it's listed. Yeah. It's You're torturous, not, it's torturous okay. interference. So I, I, it would be a, um, a, a liability. Even if they come to you, even if I come to you, even if they come, even if they come to me and unless it's within six months, I believe. Okay. Don't quote me on that, but I believe it's within six months of that uh, agreement coming up. 
So you would almost have to punt in that scenario and say, hey, if your situation changes, we're here for you. In the right. meantime, it's kind of like pending litigation. I just can't talk about it. Right. Okay. Yeah. And, and yeah, and uh, and um, in all fairness, if there are, are, are people that have um, um, consulted with their legal team and negotiated their way um, out sure. of their agreements, I'm not suggesting you should do that. Yeah. You should consult with your attorney. Um, and I could probably put you on the phone with maybe a couple of people maybe that have, um, uh, have done that, but I, I have never, I've right. never done that. Um, I've never put someone on the phone with someone that I believe got out of a uh, franchise agreement. I just don't touch it. Yeah. It's yeah. Tough. It's tricky. And that, and let's be honest, that's part of the reason. And there's a lot of them. It's hard to get out. It, there's a lot of those calls. So uh, that's sort of like you just having to say, Hey, we'll be here when you can right. in the meantime. Right. Good luck. Yeah. It makes sense. I mean, you know, I think sometimes, um, People that don't know the real work that goes into doing what you're doing might assume you're cheating or might assume that you're cutting corners. And I just right. know you're not. No. And, but, that, but we do get very defensive when we're losing, right? When we start oh, losing, yeah. somebody starts chipping away at our armor. It's not usually the look in the mirror moment that we start no. with. It's blame them, right. yeah, challenge you're... their credibility. I'm sure you've dealt with some of that. Oh, yeah. too. All right. Last question about EXP. And then I want to get into exactly how you're using technology to attract business which is relevant yeah. to anybody. And then I want to also know a little bit about, you know, having interviewed so many top agents, recruited so many top agents, like kind of get into the mind of what makes them successful, uh, some of the attributes they have. But yeah. last question about EXP is about the future. Your pitch is compelling today. Sure. Keller Williams's pitch was compelling five to 10 years ago as well. Remax's pitch was compelling 15 to 20 years ago as well. I'm guessing 108 years ago when Gold Cold Bank. Baker started, like their pitch was compelling as well. So my question is, why is EXP going to be the one I should be with five years from now? I understand why you're kind of the cool new thing. Right. But things change. So right. what is the strategy for the future to stay relevant, to stay right. ahead of this curve? Right. So, um, so this is, that's a really good question. And I, I, I believe that, that e people come to EXP and, and our goal is for them never to leave. Right. I mean, that's the models built around opportunity for agents that stick around. Um, and so I, I believe that until somebody creates something better than revenue share and stock in a publicly traded company, mm -hmm. um, there's going to be a better reason for you to be here than, than anywhere else. Mm -hmm. um, if there was some blockbuster technology that just changes the game, um, I believe it would probably be more of a disruptor to our relationship with the consumer as opposed to um, your relationship with the brokerage. Um, that's just my, my personal feeling on that. Um, I, don't, I don't know that, um, that, that there's going to be any, any dramatic change in the way. If you're, I believe, and I know you do as well, Chris, you should be responsible for your own getting of clients, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. you shouldn't be giving your money up to, um, you know, to realtor.com and in lieu of learning how to market and acquire your own mm -hmm. customer um, or Zillow or any of those for that matter. I mean, it's fine. Well, that Jimmy, it's Jimmy, who's not on today, Jimmy has a great quote about this. Zillow is a tax you pay for being bad at marketing. That's such right. a great quote. And it, 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 it's true. And it's not true. Like I understand why he says it and I agree with him. at the same time. If you're great at marketing, you have money to reinvest into marketing. True. True. So uh, it's kind of both right, but yeah, it's a, it's a good point. You know, your job is to get your own leads. It probably always has been. It always probably will be. Um, is, is Zillow going to buy EXP? Have you heard anything about that? No, nothing that I've heard whatsoever. And I feel like I'm pretty well plugged in, although any kind of conversation like that would probably not make it to, to my ears. Okay. Um, and on, on, a, on a scale of one to 10, how, because this is something people may not know. Keller Williams was revenue share. Right. And then they switched to profit share. Right. As a business owner yourself, you definitely know the difference between revenue and profit. Like right. I, I'm a pretty generous guy. Right. I'm not completely money driven. So I'm more than happy to take some of my profit and give it to my team, give it to right. my people, reinvest it. I'm not real willing to share my revenue because that's a slippery slope that apparently Keller Williams felt like had to end. So right. what if revenue share goes away and it becomes profit share? 
Is no. is that not blow up a big part of the appeal? It'll Does never happen. Wall Street not going to make you guys do that because no, no, no not it's never going to happen. And here's here's why. First of all, the reason it didn't work with Keller Williams. Let's look at you know it's apples and oranges. Mm -hmm. Keller Williams was brick and mortar franchise model regions franchises limited opportunity all the same cost and infrastructure and they tried to do revenue share and it didn't work and that makes more sense why it didn't work in this model there's hundreds of millions of dollars in the model that that's not. That, that, that's not there that, and you, when you remove the mechanism for growing the company regions mm -hmm. and franchisees, and you have to have a way to grow the company. The, the way you grow the company is you reward the agents. You put the agents in an ownership position and you allow the agents to recruit mm -hmm. and some will, some won't. And some are going to see a huge opportunity in that. And they're going to take advantage of it. You basically have the opportunity uh, that a, re a regional did um, in the, that revenue share that came that, that we paid in royalties that mm -hmm. they got that little piece of, you have that same opportunity now in this business model. It was just so, a brilliant. So let, me, let me see if I'm hearing this right. You're saying the margins are much better due to it being a cloud model. 100%. So th in turn, there's parts of the revenue you can share without going into the black. Or right. Into there was the revenue shared before. It just went to regions, right? Mm -hmm. It went to the top. You know, it goes to the ownership and to the region. Sure. So that, that was, it, it was a, I mean, it's a brilliant business model shift mm -hmm. in, in that way. And so, you know, in terms of sustainability, we can, you know, we can talk through that. I think there, there has been this, you know, this looming thing that's hanging over EXP's head that it's, it's not, um, it's not sustainable because you, you, it's really difficult for you to say it is or isn't sustainable because you don't know at any given point how many people are going to be earning at what level mm -hmm. um, to say you're going to have, you know, X percent paid out in revenue share. And I know, I know what, what they're doing to solve that. And I'm thrilled that they're doing it. Um, and it's it's it will be sustainable. It hasn't been announced, so I don't feel like it's my place to announce it. Um, yeah. But I know what I know what the the change that's being made is, and it, it it will be sustainable, and it will always be revenue share forever. Um, and that's you know that means this opportunity will exist for us for. You know, Did you work at Keller Williams at any point, Jay? No, I, I didn't. I tried to actually open a Keller Williams, and the one in Lawton, um, small town, just didn't it failed. And I remember a conversation I had with Dave Jinks. Mm -hmm. And, um, and he said, if you can't get 250 agents in the office, you just can't get it to be profitable. And yeah. that was like all the agents in Lawton. So, mm -hmm. um, that's probably why it didn't make it, but I love Keller Williams. I thought it was a great, um, great model. I had a lot of friends there, been to several family reunions. Mm -hmm. um, but once, you know, once I went independent, to be honest with you, I didn't think I would ever join another brokerage. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I just didn't see any plausible reason why until I saw EXP. Cool. So real quick, Jay, we're doing a contest right now. We're actually giving away a MacBook, an iPhone, or a Samsung S10. We would love everybody to go enter it right now. During the summer, we're trying to get more subscribers to the audio edition of the show. We actually get thousands of people that listen later, hundreds of people that tune in live. If you would like to enter to win a MacBook Air, an iPhone XS, or a Galaxy S10, all you have to do is go right now to Curator dot com slash audio we've got a really cool contest you can enter to win several times next week we have tom ferry live and i believe we are announcing the winner at the end of that episode so make sure that you guys go to curator.com slash audio enter for your chance to win normally jay we do kind of a small giveaway every week right uh, we decided for the summer we'll do a huge giveaway Nice. We want people listening. I'm tired of Brian Buffini having more podcast downloads than me. No doubt. You, you're, you're the best, man. I agree. Jesus Christ. All right. So let me get back to this. Now I'm going to get into how, because these are really the lessons I think are applicable yeah. to all. There's a great conversation happening in the chat, Jay, on Facebook. So feel free to hop in there afterwards. Okay. And, I will. Uh, Happy to. Reach out to people. But anytime you reach out to pitch someone, it's a little scary. You know, whether you're an ISA calling a lead for curator, whether you're me calling a big company to try to sell them something or whether you're reaching out to an agent, it's really tricky. Uh, right. Even if it's a good lead, even if it's a referral. So I want you to walk me through like exactly how you reach out and exactly what you say when you're reaching out for the first time. Right. So um, this is going to be disappointing to you knowing, knowing your background sales Mm -hmm. Um, but I am, I am inherently, um, not lazy, but just strategic in the way that I try to, to do business. Mm -hmm. And so, um, the strategy that I used for the first really 
15 months, I didn't make an outbound phone call. I didn't send an email. I didn't do anything uh, to, um, to, to market to anybody. Um, the only thing that I did was I produced content. Mm -hmm. And um, that is a lesson that everybody can learn from for sure, especially in today's world and, and with Facebook and the opportunity that it provides um, with, um, you know, once you get someone interested in something and how you can retarget, which I did none of um, that either. Um, I, I would say I probably did the least amount you could do, uh, to attract as many agents as we have. Um, but it's, it was content. It was a content strategy. It was Facebook live. It was posted on YouTube. Uh, mm -hmm. and it was, it was consistency of that, that really drove inbound, um, meeting requests and, mm -hmm. you know, Calendly, Calendly people registering to jump on a call for 20 minutes sure, and sure. I would answer their questions. So the positioning of that was, it was such that people were, were, get in on a call with me. They were mm -hmm. calling, they call my cell phone. I don't jump on a, a special line where I got to be dialing in at a certain point. Mm -hmm. um, it's 20 minutes, not 30, um, which is, um, um, and, it, and, and on the calendar invite, it talks specifically about how I value my time and that if you book this time, you don't be late. And ironically, for the first 12 months, I never had one person miss a phone call. The phone rang on the button, um, mm -hmm. and and I, I was just in a position of strength in terms of the conversation. And so, um, and at that point, they had consumed the things that I wanted them to consume because that was what was asked of them before they got on the call. Um, and that was um, it. Made the it just made it. Um, you know, never had I had. I haven't had to sell anybody on EXP. I've only answered. Yeah. It's just well, ed information and education. Sure. And that's is something everybody needs to understand is that when your marketing is great, you actually don't have to have all those jitters about sales. Right. The, the reason, Jay, that I have to teach people multiple page scripts and I have to write books about right. the conversion code is because they're working leads that aren't actually interested. Right. They're so, not really <laughs> exactly. They're not really a prospect. They're just a person, you know, right. and when that's the case, you're right. You have to be methodical and you have to be, th but when you're attracting, right, you're not chasing, right. You don't get nearly as nervous, right? Like, because, and I love what you did there. You're making them call you. This is a technique I'm going to use every single time for the rest of my life. It's I'm the never, best dude. It's so good. I'm never calling anyone again because you're right. Just that little bit of that power play of, Hey, it's Jay calling from curator. Did you have a few? No, they're saying, Hey Jay, is this a good time? Or are we are we still right. on? Whereas right. normally the salesperson saying, "Is this a good time? Or are we still on?" Right. right. And right. so everything from making them call you, and then even putting a little bit of a warning. Warning, my right. time is valuable. Like th that's a way to like increase your show rate. Right. Of the appointment. Right. Um, and so there's ways to lean into that. Hey, we only do a, a handful of these meetings per month. We'd appreciate it if mm -hmm. you could be on time and Position. have all your questions ready. Yeah. It's right. about power and it's yep. about confidence. And that's the thing is if you don't want to be desperate, quit acting desperate. Right. And remember what he said. He put it out for a year. Now, here, this actually goes right into my next question. It's almost like I'm good at this. <laughs> it's almost like we prepared. You did. <laughs> at least uh, I did. I prepared this morning. So... I've been watching you. I've been preparing for years, Jay, by watching. It's, it's actually interesting is you can go to our speeches and you can read our blogs and you can listen to our podcast and you can read our books or you can just watch us and you, right. can, you can observe what we're doing. Right. Typically, you can backwards dissect what to do quicker through mm -hmm. observing than even through training because the truth about what we do for a living is what we do for a living. Right. So I don't really need to say podcasts help your business. Why do you think me and Jimmy do one every week? Right. You know what I mean? I don't need to say influencer marketing works. I just bring on influencers and their tribe watches them and that brings us people. Right. So right. I think a lot of it you can learn through observing, it, which is what I did. And I want to go back to Facebook Live for a second. Because what I told my team that I was impressed by was you created this sort of movement where it feels like everybody is joining EXP. Right. Clearly, that's a movement everybody wants for their brand. We want everybody to think everybody's joining Curator. You know, cl right. clients want everybody to think everybody lists with them in a, in a certain neighborhood, right? right. And what, the way I explained it to my team was that you weren't beating your drum the loudest. You were beating it the longest. Yeah. Because every week, every week, every week... You're, you're showing that social proof. Another team joined, another team joined, another team joined. 
But the reality is, Jay, as I watched you do that, a lot of times your Facebook Lives had like four people watching. Right. That's 100% right. Yeah, you so, can get discouraged if you don't know, if you don't understand the process. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like your business objective was working, but what people could see might be judged as almost a flop. Right. So how do you stay focused and positive and how did you execute so consistently and still do today when those vanity metrics might not be there for you? Right. Yeah. It's, um, it, it's, you just got to not look at it and, and you understand the views come after. Right. And, and it's, it's really about, you know, getting the, the Facebook whip going and, you know, the commenting and if you can get some commenting, liking and sharing going. And, you know, we had some that had 20 plus thousand views, um, you know, and so, you know, that's what you're really looking for is that is, you know, getting it on a run mm -hmm. um, afterwards and, uh, and getting everyone to participate in the beginning, everyone participated. And this is the magic in the model, man. Like you, it would be really hard to get every one of, of um, our clients, say, in, even in AEA uh, or even maybe curator to, to get excited about another person that, that just joined, right? Mm -hmm. But there's that financial alignment piece. Sure. And man, this is Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett 101. And I watched them at, um, at, in Omaha at their, you know, their annual gathering or whatever. I'd never been to one. Me and Ryan Stuman went up there or flew up there and, and went to it and a few of his buddies. And it was, it was incredible. The first thing they said was there's a, um, there's, there was all the, the hype about Wells Fargo, which is what, who they bank with. Mm -hmm. And, um, and there was some deal that was going on where that people were creating fake accounts and it was a big deal at the time. Mm -hmm. and so they asked, they asked Warren what he, what he was going to do if he was going to be looking at another bank and Warren started right out of the gate with, I don't worry about, um, problems. He goes, there's probably problems in one of our companies we'll learn about tomorrow. And that's, you know, but when I look for, the first thing I look for is I look for where was the compensation misaligned for the action mm -hmm. in every situation. And, you know, we've all heard that before. And then there's, you know, you know other books that talk about, you know, it's not about the, uh, the stick, it's about the carrot, whatever. Um, but the compensation alignment drives behavior. And, um, you, you know, you get, you get this culture and this, this, this whole entire company of people that are rallying for everyone because we have some ownership and we have some, you know, potential passive income coming in. And, and that's going to help me do it to get some more passive income and the stock's going to potentially go up. So, yeah, I'll comment, like, and share on that too. And so when you get, when you, when you create that environment, um, that's, a, that's the magic, in my opinion, that alignment is, is the real magic in everything. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, I think to answer your question back simply, you, um, you, you have to understand that Facebook lives are not going to be all watched during the, you know, while you're live, they're going to be mostly watched afterwards. Um, if you follow the process to, to make sure, sure. That's, yeah, that's what I always notice a lot. And even on this show, like, I don't know how many are watching live right now. It's usually a bunch compared to other live streams I see, sure. but right. even if we have a couple hundred people watching live by the end of the day this interview is going to have 2000 views. Right. And then what you're mentioning, and we, we certainly do this, like you can retarget the people that watched more than a certain percentage of a video. So mm -hmm. one of the smart things you're doing that we're trying to do here as well is by having these longer form conversations, people that watch 50% of a 30 minute interview, good Lord, that's right. 15 minutes that they stuck right. with you. So we've always loved doing kind of long form as yep. the pillar. And then, yeah, go chop up some of that into little yep. maybe snippets for social. But right. like, we don't just have fans. We have true raving yes. fans. 100%. We don't just get leads. We get people ready to sign. And I do think part of that's because we go longer. But right. you're absolutely right. Like, we, we actually live in a world, in my opinion, where the only thing videos do for you on social is build the next audience on social to mm -hmm. actually then get a result from. We call that the boomerang technique. You yep. throw a video, you get it all the thousands of cheap views, but then you retarget those people that watch more than X percentage of it. Great stuff. I didn't know you were doing that, but clearly it's working. So beyond- Let me add, let me add one yeah. thing to this mm -hmm. because you'll appreciate it. So. Mm -hmm. The thing that nobody is doing besides not doing that consistently mm -hmm. um, is, is, is they're not taking that same content and putting it on YouTube. Sure. And YouTube is now bigger than Google. And, and, and the key thing in, in understanding marketing, you, I mean, my favorite thing is people are at the bottom of the funnel. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'm not trying to get top of funnel. Top of funnel is a home buyer doing a home search. Sure, Bottom sure. of funnel is somebody ready to buy, you know, ready to buy the house. Mm -hmm. um, and and at the, people at the bottom of the funnel, people that have been exposed to EXP in some ways, or maybe somebody was chirping at them, they're like, well, I'm going to go Google and see what this is all about. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're not if you're not putting that content on YouTube, then you know you're not you don't have. I mean, people the call that I just got off. She's like, I've been watching all your videos. Yeah. On yeah. YouTube. And that's, um, you know, that's the second piece of the content strategy that um, I haven't seen anyone really execute. But well, you know what, Jay, here's the reason the shell like the retention and the view rate on Facebook is through the roof while right. you're on live and maybe shortly thereafter, but it disappears like 24 right. hours later, it's useless and nobody right. finds it unless you boost it. And then if, if you do boost an hour video later, it doesn't get the traction it got right. when it was live. So we do the same thing. Like every one of these goes on YouTube. And in fact, when we pay to do our video advertising, a lot of times we pay to boost the ad on YouTube yeah. because the percentage of the view after it's live there is higher. Right. The engagement in the live viewer is over here on Facebook. And you know what you said there about aligning profit? I love that. What, what you're doing and what EXP is doing is what Silicon Valley does. Like if you go work for Slack or... Yeah. When I was with Dotloop or if you go to work at Zillow, the, the Silicon Valley mindset is that you are an owner and you get stock options and those stock options vest over time. And after right. they vest, they're yours, whether right. you leave or not. Right. So it's one thing to you know want people to act like an owner. It's another thing to hope they act like an owner. But what you're saying Warren Buffett does is he just makes them an owner. Because right. that's the ultimate like shortcut to getting what you want is show them that if this thing blows up, you're along for the ride. You're right. not just going to get a pat on the back. You're going to get a big check too. And honestly, Jay, we treat our employees like owners, but I don't think there's anything we could do that would be more powerful, especially at scale, right. than actually making them an owner through profit or revenue share. I sure. won't. I won't commit to revenue right. share. Right. Yeah, it's a, that's a hard one to. I, yeah, I will. Uh, we are working very hard on a profit share for our employees because you're absolutely right. People are jaded. You know that. Like every time Gary Keller gets another billion dollars, you don't know what he does with it. You know what I mean? But if you're connected to his next billion, and the kind of rising uh, tide raises all the ships. So Jay, last question about. Uh, you know, fa beyond Facebook Live, and you just mentioned YouTube, but don't give me that answer. What is another online tactic that you wouldn't let me pry away from you? What is another way you're doing marketing online, a, a specific tactic that is what we call wet, works every time? Hmm. So it works every time. And we're talking from an agent recruiting standpoint? Yeah, just with the tech. Like you're, you're clearly using Facebook Live. The key is the consistency. The key right. is the retargeting afterwards. It's important to put it on YouTube. Give me one more practical so, tip. Yeah. So, so the, the um, you know, we, we have a, a funnel that's a partner, partner with us funnel. And mm -hmm. um, you couldn't pry that away from me because, you know, there's limitations to what we can market and using EXP's name. Um, okay. Um, the, in fact, there's some pretty, pretty strict rules about around, you know, what you can and can't do. And, and for good reason. Um, so we can't just go out there blasting things, EXP, you know, around EXP. So mm -hmm. we had to, we had to come at it from a different angle, of course. And, and that worked out best for us because, well, that's what we did for, you know, the last 15 years was market to real estate agents. So, sure. um, so, you know, I would say that, you know, it's a funnel, you know, it's the ability to drive, drive people to, um, to a video, an on-demand video or webinar. Um, that's, that, that's the one thing that, um, you know, if, if you can get someone to click and show they're interested, now you have somebody you can retarget with any number of things that you want them to see. And, um, that's the, that's the huge value in Facebook. Um, and why, you know, everybody should be putting their money there. So, so just to be clear, you're saying what I think I heard you describe is like a non-branded funnel. So right. you've got the EXP rocks. Here's why you should, cause I, you have, you have a domain called, uh, J what is it? J Kinder meeting or me. J Kinder dot me. Yeah. J Kinder dot me. I'm sure you don't mind people going there. Don't mind uh, it. Check it out. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good That's one. How you get my calendar if you wanted my calendar too. Yeah. So, so it's J Kinder dot M E not dot com. 
And I noticed in there, it seemed like a hybrid of, you know, oh, you can learn about EXP, you can learn about NAEA, you can schedule a time to talk, you can book me to speak at your conference. So would you say that it's sort of a transferable feature to do some marketing? We, We call this a naked burrito. Naked burrito. Which is marketing that doesn't look like marketing. Right. Right. And and so the concept is pretty simple. You're you're putting stuff out there that certainly the end game is the funnel and to get them over to EXP. Right. But the marketing is not that. It's more your personal brand. It might just be like some really great information, like an yeah. ebook. I mean, we teach a great we, podcast. It, yeah. Yeah. We teach agents how to grow their real estate business. And and the more, you know, the more it, it's no different in, in any any industry. Mm-hmm. If you can add value. Um, and the more value uh, you add, the more trust is built and the more trust is built, the more likely they are to listen to what you have to say next. Mm -hmm. And so we, you know, we've done that for years and, and, and that's what we lead with it because we can help real estate agents grow their business. We have a lot of content that we can use to help them, which is another reason why agents are aligning with the city XP is because they get access to that. So. Well, it's a good segue into the last couple questions here. Thank you. You guys give Jay props in the in the chat. Make sure you guys follow him on Instagram, jkinder82. I take it from your handle that you're three years younger than me. No, actually, I'm not. That's no. uh, that, was, that was my high school football number. Okay. Uh, yep, yep. So we're, um, I was 77, so you got me. Okay. I'm younger than you. Great. Yeah, I turned, I turned 40 in about 30 days, so I'm definitely thinking a lot about that. So last couple questions. We'll go rapid fire here. You have coached and sold stuff to and now recruited the best agents in the world. What is a trait they all have in common? Um, uh, I would, it, it, this may sound cliche, but they're hungry, humble, and smart, period. That's it. Hungry, hungry, humble, and smart. That doesn't sound cliche. That sounds perfect. Hungry. I, 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 I'm constantly unfulfilled. I try to be relatable and humble. And I, I'm constantly sharpening my axe and at least trying to be smarter than I am. Right. I right. like that answer. So they're hungry, they're humble, and they're smart. Good answer. You also give a lot of sales pitches. You've also, I'm sure as an agent especially, heard a lot of sales pitches. Oh, yeah. What are the elements of a great sales pitch? Um, the elements of a great sales pitch, I think start. it starts with understanding the customer um, you know, and, and for me, it's understanding the needs of the customer and what they're trying to accomplish first. That's mm-hmm. before anything comes before anything. Um, um, the other thing that I think a lot of agents miss that's it's really important is what that what somebody consumes about you prior to your arrival is what keeps you from having to sell when you get there. Mm-hmm. Right. So like anytime that you're having to sell, um, there's something that should have been consumed that positions you as an expert ahead of time. That's okay. that's just my belief. Um, and so, uh, with, with those two things in mind, then it's a matter of understanding how are you, what's your value proposition? That's the key to everything. Mm-hmm. So for us, we have a proven repeatable system backed by market research to sell homes for up to 18% more than the methods of tra- traditional real estate agents. Would you like for me to show you how we do that? Mm-hmm. Right. That, that is a, um, that is a simple thing that if you can learn how to get the marbles out of your mouth and say, that is differentiates you from everyone else. Now you just have to make that value visible and show them you have a process for how you do that. Sure. And so. To, as far as the sales pitch, um, it's aligning that presentation to their goals and their needs. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and at the end of that, you know, if you do it correctly, there is no objections. Um, and you, you, um, you're basically telling them what to do next. You're, you're there as an advisory role. Um, you're, you're there to tell them what to do, not for you to beg for the listing. Sure. And, and, I, and for years, I did it the wrong way, right? Like, you know, you learn you know, as, you, as you continue to evolve. But I think that I think the value proposition is the central piece of everything. You have to have something that is your value proposition. It can't be your awards and all the how many homes you sold and all that stuff is um, is not um, not the right angle. Yeah, I agree. We actually had a great past episode with a guy named Sean Moore, and it, it's called the Ultimate Listing Presentation. It's in iTunes. It's on YouTube, and he has fifteen questions he asks them, and then he drops the mic. There's no questions for him. There's no pitch. It, it, he literally just asked these 15 questions and he gets what he wants every single time. People should watch that. But what you just said is the we could backwards take your advice as the bad sales pitches start with solutions before they establish the problems. Right. And how could you possibly offer a solution until you understand deeply what someone's problem is? And the way that you do that is through questions, right? Mm -hmm. Not statements. So good stuff. So I would also say, uh, you know, you're an excellent teacher. 
actually, let me ask you one other question before I end. Right. With you have been far removed from being a day-to-day -day listing agent. But when you were, you were very good at it, thus the trajectory of your career. If you had to quit doing what you're doing now, and the only thing you could do was go back to being an agent every day, what are the couple things you used to do that you would start doing again right away to get listings? Right. I, the first thing I would do is I would, I would start with physicals and expireds because I, I, you know, the first thing I would do is get some knowledge of the marketplace. Um, cause I'm not, I'm in Dallas. I never sold in Dallas. My son's 21 and he is, so I'm, I'm kind of in touch, you know what I'm sure. saying? Now I've been, you know, helping him and kind of been reliving the glory days a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I would, um, I would instantly, um, go to the low hanging fruit. Obviously that's, you know, I, that for me is just, if, if you, if you told me I didn't have a budget, that's what I would do. If you told me, um, if I was going to spend money and go acquire listings, um, I would be, I would be setting up, um, I would be setting up a funnel to dominate some of the, the, the largest neighborhoods and uh, some of the big master plan communities and become the go-to agent in that, in that marketplace, leveraging a ton of content, um, interview. Would you, would would you do mail? Would you do direct mail? I, I would do, I would do, definitely I would do direct mail. Um, would, I would, you do, do, would you door knock? Nope, I would. Ne I never have door knocked, and I never would. Um, okay, I would. But you would. Just, you would door knock the ones that were interested from the funnel. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would. I would. Um, yeah, I would be. I would be putting out content. I would do a podcast with the um, um, with all the business uh, business owners of the um, that are in there or near the community that people frequent, mm -hmm. and um, I would. Um, I would become the most. They would see me in their Facebook. Cool. Feed every day. I love it. You would become top of mind as fast as possible. Exactly. So. One of the things I love about watching your career and just following you is you really learn like Jimmy and I do from a lot of people outside the industry. Like mm -hmm. I ran into you at the HubSpot conference, right. which has nothing to do with real estate. You mentioned earlier, Ryan Steumann. He's a common friend of ours, hardcore right. closer. So I'm wondering if you could share with our audience, like who is a guru and what is an event? that's not in the real estate industry that you think we should all follow or attend? That's a, that's a really good question. Um, a guru. Um, I mean, if, if there was one person that's made the biggest impact in my life, um, mm -hmm. it's, it's on, it's been Jay Abraham. Mm -hmm. um, he doesn't do a lot of events and he's quite expensive, but he gives away everything. So, I mean, he, you know, he, he is, um, he's been by far the, 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 the guru that's been the most added the most value to me. The second one would be Dan Kennedy. Um, uh, because Dan Kennedy will teach you direct response marketing. If you don't understand direct response marketing, most everything we've modeled yep. has been after Dan Kennedy. Yeah. He's um, actually a legend. Both of these guys are, but I bet a lot of our audience has never heard of either one of them. Just true. because like when you're in the kind of internet marketing, right. You know, when you're building funnels the way we do and you do, these are your gurus. Right. When you're a real estate agent, Jay, we're the gurus. You see what right. I'm saying? So right. I, I just find it fascinating who are you learning from that's above you? Like I actually called Ryan a couple months ago and said, Hey man, you know, we're both doing a really good job. We've both grown our brand. We've both grown our business. We're both way smaller than Gary V and Ty Lopez. What the fuck is up? How do we fix that? Right. But, you know, so I just think the people that are at your level or above your level, you got to constantly look for new and different mentors, yep. you know? Um, and you guys, you do a great job of that. What would be a conference just really quickly? Um, shoot conference. Um, I mean, I think, um, I, I think the, the conference is back on now the GKIC, uh, Blazer Kennedy. Yeah. So the inner circle. Uh, yep. Inner circle. Yeah. Dan Kennedy that, inner circle. Yeah, I believe, if you get a chance to get to Dan, uh, get to see Dan, um, you would do it and anything you could do to get close to Frank Kern, I would do. Um, okay. Anywhere. And so that might be, um, uh, you know, even a Brendan Burchard or something anywhere or, or honestly, they're all, if you really want to plug into all of them and, and, and eat from the buffet, then you go to Grant Cardone. Sure. Um, his events have everybody. Yeah, his events have everybody. I'm not a huge fan of learning from him, particularly day to day, but he does bring right. all the smartest folks like Russell right. Brunson comes to mind. He's doing a huge thing. Actually, if people go to CardoneKern.com, that's a naked burrito. You should pull that up, yes, Jay. It, 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 that's it, it. Yeah, that's what I call a naked burrito, like just it. a long sales letter, which we're trying right now. Last question, Jay. Thank you so much for your time. Right. How can people get in touch with you if they wanted to learn more about eXp? Yep. So, yeah, it's pretty simple. Just go to jkinder.me. Um, I prefer you watch that video. Um, but if you just want to grab a spot on my calendar, it's right there. You click on it, find a time that works for you, and we'll jump on a call. Cool. And let them know you saw it on the water cooler that we do not get kickbacks. We do not go into the downline. We will not be sharing in your revenue. We just like bringing on smart people that are doing great work and you're one of those. So Appreciate thank you, Jay. Follow them on Twitter, uh, hit them up on Facebook, message them, tag them, 
whatever you need to do. Now, next week, we actually are bringing on Tom Ferry. We're bringing Tom back. I will say, Tom was a, a little bit more friction to schedule than you, Jay. Your stuff's easy. Tom, <laughs> Tom, Tom had a team around him that we had to yeah. get through. But we're bringing Tom back. It's going to be a great interview. He's preparing for his biggest event of the year, which is the Success Summit. I've spoken at it. It's a massive, amazing event. And I know that when he's gearing up for that, he's got a ton of new sure. ideas and exciting information. So next week we have Tom on. Do me a favor, you guys. I want you to tweet Tom right now and just tell him you're excited that he's coming on the water cooler. Tweet at Tom Ferry. The last thing is if you want to hire us, meaning curator, to do your marketing for you every week, uh, Jay mentioned, obviously, the importance of marketing and funnels and inbound. That is what we do for a living. You can go to curator.com slash WC, and we will hook you up. Jay, thanks for your time, buddy. Great chat. Thank you, man. Thanks.